Hello and welcome back to Sheaf Math. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to write exponential equations from a table or a sequence. So we're going to be looking at an xy table here, and this is an exponential function. And uh, in order to write an equation for this function, you have to know how an exponential function is set up. And so here is the generic form of that function, that equation. And so the a represents the zero term, or the y-intercept, and the b represents the common ratio, or the number that seems to be multiplying each time on the y side of the table. And the y and the x remain. Those are the ones we need in our equation. So the first thing we're going to do is easily identify the zero term. Uh, when x is zero, whatever y is, that is our y-intercept. And so we found our zero term. And then our common ratio is the division of a number by the one that comes before it. So the first one is 6 divided by 3, which is 2. 12 divided by 6, which is 2. And you'll find that in an exponential function, these uh, numbers, or this, this ratio, will always be the same if you take a number and divide it by the one before it. So we now have our common ratio. And since we have both of our numbers, we put our 3 in for the a and our 2 in for the b, and we have our exponential equation. Not too bad. Let's take a look at another one. So here we are again going to find our zero term and our common ratio. And so the zero term, again, is real easy to find there. Uh, anytime you have zero in that table on the x side. And so we have that one. Now we are going to find the common ratio. And so we take a number and divide it by the one before it. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 50 divided by 10 is 5. 250 divided by 50 is 5, and so on. And so that's what makes an exponential function the way it is, is that it has a common ratio. If it doesn't have that same ratio, it is not exponential. So we found our two numbers. We put them in for our a and our b, 2 for a, 5 for b, and we've got our equation. So now this, this table is a little bit different. Um, we still want to find our zero term and ratio as usual. Um, our zero term is very easy to find. It's 81. Um, but this, these numbers seem to be going down. Okay, And so we are going to find the ratio the exact same way that we found uh, it in the other ones. And so the first pair, 27 divided by 81, or 27 over 81, simplifies to 1 -third. And so 9 over 27 also simplifies to 1 -third, and all of these do. And so you really want to pay attention that you are, the ratio that you're using is the number that's actually multiplying each time. Uh, saying that it divides by 3, which uh, it, you know, it is dividing by 3, but that is not how we write the ratio. It's the number that is being multiplied each time. So 1 -third is our ratio. We put those into our generic function, and we have our equation. Okay, now on this table, uh, we're going to find our zero term and ratio, but you'll notice that the zero term is not visible here. Um, and we will find out what it is, but first we're going to find the ratio, because that's going to help us find the zero term. So we uh, start dividing our numbers. 4 divided by 1 equals 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4, and so on. So we found that one. And so what we're going to do to find our zero term is just extend our table up top, and so to find the number before this, if everything is being multiplied by 4, then we would do the reverse, which is divide by 4. And 1 divided by 4 is 0.25, which is our zero term. And so we put those into our equation and have our final answer. All 
All right, now suppose that you had a sequence of numbers such as this. Sometimes you'll be asked to find the equation of a sequence. And so we have 5, 10, 20, and 40. And these are the first four terms of the sequence. And so the easiest way, I think, to um, just continue the same way that you're making those equations is to put it into a table. And so I put it into the table with my x terms, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I also left a space for the 0 terms so that we can find that in a second. So we will find our common ratio first. And so 10 divided by 5 is 2. 20 divided by 10 is 2. And so we found our common ratio. And so then to find our 0 term, we simply divide 5 by 2. And we get 2.5. And so that is our 0 term. We put them into the generic equation. And we have our final answer. So it's really not that tough. You just have to find those two important numbers. And sometimes you have to do a little work to find them. But um, as long as you follow the same uh, rules each time, you're going to find that equation pretty easy. And so there you have it. You learned how to write exponential equations from a table or even a sequence. Well, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.